What's up, WizardFu here? Another live stream. This is a do-over. I got moved here. I'm in a new place. This place is called, uh, this, I'm in a co-working spot here in San Francisco, trying this out, seeing what it's like to live stream from here. Super fast internet, loving this. But we're back for another live stream. Today I'm working on particle systems. So this will be three-dimensional. Um, let me just give a little overview here. <laughs> Take it somewhere. Wow. Okay, so today's goal is to have some particles coming off of that flickering flame right there. So I want to see a three dimensional particle system of little sparks flying off the top of that fire. And um, the particle system has all been refactored, pulled from Songbringer moved over to this voxel engine. So now basically it's just a process of moving it from what it was, the 2D system, to a three-dimensional system. So um, all the code's been already refactored. I basically just have to put in the part that draws them. So taking each one, making it a nice 3D position, and then drawing it with its voxels. In fact, I may have most of the code already finished. So what did I do there? OK, let's get that building. Oh my god, what's happening here? This is such a weird day. I'm hitting the build, my build shortcut, and it's like, it's crazy stuff here. Let's just close Vim. Let's see that's Vim's fault. Okay, I'm hitting Command B. Oh, it's pasting stuff. Oh, this is so weird. Uh. Well, we're back. What's up, T? How have you been, man? Jeez, just keeps on this weird shortcut issue right now. Okay, let's just commit that. Yeah, Swarmonia Explorer. Release Q4 this year. Right on, buddy. Glad to hear it. How's everything else, man? How's the weather in Germany this year? It's been cr it's been crazy cold and uh, and rainy here in the on the west coast of the United States, in the Southwest. So much rain and snow. Like I think in Arizona, they got like three feet of snow in Flagstaff, which is unheard of. Like they got three foot of snow in one night. It's crazy. So there's been so much. Um, so much rain. It's really good. California was in a drought before this, but now, now we got plenty of rain this year, I think. What the heck? So I can't get the power to work over here either. What's wrong with this? I need to have the power working so we can actually compile at good speeds. Freezing in the morning and then super warm later. Yeah. Wow. So your weather's been crazy this year too? How 
power cord has a light on it. There we go. Cool, we got power at least. <laughs> Works going good? Cool, man. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Okay, let's see if I can get my... Something's wrong with my shortcuts. I'm pressing build. Wait, what happens if I press build here? There, it's totally fine. And it looks like we're compiling a little faster. When my, my laptop is doesn't have power connected, it's using like a throttled version of its CPU, so I don't want to be doing that at all. Okay, cool. Well, that's working. Yeah, man. Van life. Things are going good. I'm, I'm loving my life. Life is really good right now. Um, I love the van. I love, tr I love the, the whole like combining work and travel. Like last year, you know, I was in Thailand for a while and this year I'm back in the United States, but sort of living a sort of travel lifestyle and man, I'm loving it. It, it works really well for me. It keeps me really inspired all the time which is great for game development because it's like, you know, being inspired is, you need it. You need that creative energy, you need that juice. So life's good, man. I'm really happy. Okay, so what the heck was going on here? If I just press build, now it's fine. Okay, I don't know what the heck all, <laughs> that was so weird. We were in a tunnel of weirdness, but now we're out of the tunnel. Okay, so I can close this. What I want to work on is the particle system. So let's get the particles open. Keep render system open. Particles. Okay, particles. All right, so I think the problem is here when we're actually projecting the particle positions. Let's see what we got here. If I just set a breakpoint here. Oh, I think I need to add one more little thing into this bit of code. Let's get rid of the yesterday's breakpoints. Don't need those. And we'll add in, I think this is what, this, is what need this, this bit of code needs is to add in the render offset. So render system, oh shoot, we can't, I have a render system here. Offset 2D, oh. Oh yeah, we got offset 2D as a variable, I think the, oh. What? Oh yeah, particles. Particles offset. Oh yeah, that's just a public. Okay, great. So we can set the offset to the human render system. There. Cool, you're prototyping your next game. <laughs> nice, man. Fully self-written engine. Cool. That's exciting. I love engines. Um Yeah, I think you you showed you showed me a, a couple of your Ludum Dara games. Which one is this that you were basing basing it on? With the engine? Cool. I think, I think that'll work. Let's see. We got a breakpoint. We shouldn't have a breakpoint yet. Let's get a breakpoint right there. Whoa, what happened? That's. <laughs> I swear I didn't press the print button. Black hole escape. 
cool. Oh, dude, look at this. Right on, man. So what did you make this um, engine with? Is this OpenGL? Are you using Vulkan? Um, DirectX. Oh, it's on top of LWJGL. What? So it's a GL base? You didn't know that's not a what is LWJGL? Oh, it's Java. That's right. Yeah, I remember you. You work with Java. Oh, and they're switching it to Vulkan soon. That's cool. Oh yeah, I'll recommend this to anybody that ever is asking about a game engine for Java. This one seems really good. Like the, I like this lightweight part, you know what I mean? Because Java games can some Java engines in general can be a little bit heavy. Yeah, sweet man. Nice engine. Yeah. Sweet man. Oh yeah, just bindings. It's sort of like almost like an SDK. <laughs> okay. So we got some code to debug here. So, this is inside the particle systems animate method. Basically, we're looping over every single one of the individual particles in the system and uh, moving, the, moving the particles around according to what type of particle they are and then drawing them. And now we're at the point, so hopefully, let's see what this particle's, uh, this particle's position, no, this is the particle's pointer. We're looking at the actual particle. Okay, that's it right there. All right, so this particular particle is type zero. It's got a vector that's normalized. It's a three-dimensional vector. We have a position of that. Oh, this Y position looks, oh, wait a minute. This is in, this is a three-dimensional position. Oh, this whole particle system needs to be offset by a, another position. The position of the actual source of the particle system. That's probably what's missing here. Oh, really? Tell me about this. What was this this stupid Java 8 Windows 10 bug? Man, I can't believe it costed you sales. Uh, so, okay, we're going to project this position. This position is only 1.6 seven so that means that these particles will, oh these particles are all just going to draw themselves um, at the lower left of the screen maybe okay well, let's see what this, this projects as if we project that position we get a pause 2d Whoa, that's really huge. Why is it 3,000 by 3,000 pixels, 8,000 pixels? How could it be that much? You just oh, we're, we're talking about the actual pause, not the... Uh, ah, okay. So how did that pause get that big? All right. All right. Okay, we got to start from the beginning here. And I think we're missing... I think we're missing the offset of... Offset 2D, and here we go, in the render system, we want to have the offset 2D be the render offset 2D, no, the position 2D of the fire entity. Okay, so this is e.render.pause2d, 
and then e dot render particles offset two D plus equals something like this render offset camera pause. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. Oh, it didn't even run. Oh, uh, because of the different op yeah, oh, just the OpenGL version string being wrong could mess up everything. Oh yeah, wow. I'm sure that's I'm sure that's happened with my games too at some point. Like people people will say something like, "Oh man, it doesn't run on my my system even though I have a GTX 1080." And it's probably has something to do with some lower level library inside of Coco Studio X I'm using. Yeah, dang. Ah, uh, it sucks. Okay, so it's a breakpoint here too. Alright. Okay, so let's step into the system again. Okay, so now we're setting our offset 2D starting with the render pause 2D. So what's that already? Should we gotta jump into all this here? Render, particles, offset 2D. All right. Oh, this is two dimensional, that's right. Pause 2D is 700, 400. Oh, there's no need to add camera pause or render offset. Oh. Okay. You just need that. Okay. That's great. We'll leave that breakpoint there. And this breakpoint is what we're going to be focusing on next. Okay, so the problem was that our pause was really weird. So let's figure out why the actual position for this particle is so off. Close particles.h2, keep it a little simpler. I just got two files open. Okay, so now we need to walk through this all this code here where it's moving the position of the of the particle. Let's start from the beginning. Right here. And we'll turn off that one. Okay, so we're gonna step through this, figure out why the position was so huge. And once we get the 3D three-dimensional position correct, we should be really close and we're just gonna be able to render that voxel the right way. With the right position. Okay, why did it oh I turned off the wrong one? Okay, no worries, we got plenty of particles to debug here. Alright, we'll start with this one. Alright, this particle has the current ooh, huge position. Oh, no wonder. It's already starting with the wrong position. Okay, we got to go back to where there. It's setting up the position for each particle. The time to here. There's an event here tonight. Pretty stoked about it. Oh, it's starting right now. <laughs> well, this might be a short stream, but let's let's try to get some stuff done first. Particles. Um, oh, X one is fifteen thousand. Doesn't seem right. I'm getting the bounds based on. Oh, this is. Uh, I got it. I'm I'm streaming from a co-working spot. What's up, farmhand? Um, I'm trying out some different spots because uh, one of the problems I've had in my life lately is finding really good internet. So since I live in my van, um, they usually get great internet on 4G. That's really the best uh, the best internet I've found. But here at this co-working spot, it's just like kills the internet. Any other anything else I've found, like I'm getting an upload rate of 160 
Mbps right now. It's crazy good. So I could probably even stream better quality streams here at this place. So I'm trying it out. It's my first time here, and I'm just you know seeing what it's like to actually even work here and see if I can stream here. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'm in San Francisco. It's this uh, co-working spot, and uh, there's a few other co-working spots I could try too. So it looks like it's getting the bounds wrong. So the get bounds method needs. Uh, let's step in. Let's go to. Uh, hey, Belazio. What's up, brother? Oh, get bounds. Okay, wait. Get bounds is this. So let's define size.x times ink. Oh. So our size, this needs to be size.xf, or x0, could, no, we want that to be f. Okay, yeah, so all these just need to be, oops, like that, I'll do it again here. Man, I love Vim. Repeat that command. What a pleasure. Oh, a co a co-working spot. It's basically co-working is like where um, you pay like a daily fee or a mem or a, me a monthly fee, and you're able to work out of a um, like an office with other people that are also doing that. They're they're paying a fee to work from that spot for a certain amount of time. So typically, a co-working place will have great internet, usually like little amenities like water, coffee stuff like that. It's just a, a place where you can work. So that should do it there. Yeah, yeah, a shared office. I'm surprised. I thought you would I know I know for certain you have uh, you guys have that in Germany and like Berlin for example definitely has some co-working maybe it's called something else you probably you guys probably have a word for it in Germany but yeah it's kind of all over the world now there's all these spots where you can work from it's kind of becoming popular because more and more people are able to work remotely right so you, you're able to so many people these days are able to take their laptop and work from anywhere this is kind of like, but you still need to have sort of an office environment for some things. Like for oh. me, example, I need to have good internet sometimes when I want to stream, for example. Okay, let's step in this time. Okay, this time, let's see what our x0, y0, and all that turns out to be. That's much better, much better. We got, this is 151542, which is the size we want, not 15,000. So now our m pause is x0 times r1, blah, 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 blah. That should be a, that should be a good position now. Our particle m has a pause of, boom, 3, 15. Cool, so that, let's turn on our other breakpoint. Uh, oh, not that one either. Oh yeah, we want to. Let's see this breakpoint too. <laughs> okay. So the, the particle's position should be set up correctly. And now we're actually animating it or moving the position. So the position is, starts at about 315. And we're going to add in a little bit of the vector based on the speed and the delta. So we really should just have about the same position. Let's see where we're at now. Yeah, cool. We just added a little bit. Great. I'm pretty sure. That's okay now. Now we're going to get down to here and we're going to translate that position into a two-dimensional position. That pauses. 
1.6. Wait, what? Oh, no, no, this is not. Okay, we want to look at the actual pause now. This 5, 14, good. Okay, view, view project. So this should be, pause 2D should come out to be something small. Yeah, 5, 7.6. Okay, making that an integer. And then adding in the offset 2D. And we have pause 2D of 700, 400. And then we're painting at that position. I don't know about that Z position though. That could affect everything. Let's see, offset 2D. Oh, offset 2D needs to be based on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, we want to subtract. We want to subtract. We want to subtract from the view project a little bit. So, this is slightly wrong here. We want to go, we want to at least subtract the Z position. So, pause, I think, pause2d.z minus equal, or actually just, let's just try this. Pause, pause2d minus equals view project zero. Zero. V three zero. And we'll make that a variable too. So we'll call this projection origin. So we're not doing that for every single particle. Okay, so auto projection origin equals that. Okay, so we're subtracting the projection origin and then we're making an integer, adding the offset. I think that should be accurate. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. I think it's a pretty big thing around the world these days to have these, these co-working spots because so, so many more people are able to work remotely. Um, there's even a huge movement of, it's called the digital, digital nomads, basically. People are taking their work on the road and working from all over the world. Really, there's one, there's one every day, really. I really, I really recommend, um, working from one. You know, I, 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 I've always worked alone. I've always worked on my projects in private mostly, but it's fun to be in a, in a co-working environment because you're just around other people. You get to meet people, you get to like socialize. There's events going on from time to time. And it, for me, it gives me the sense that I'm not alone, you know what I mean? Because I'm a solo game developer. It's fun to like be around other people sometimes, you know? Okay, let's see how that goes. Run that again. So we have the pause for, wait a minute. Oh, that's because that's I have an offset. Oh, oh yeah, oh gosh. I didn't even think about that, Teak. Wow, you must need like absolute silence, huh? Like really quiet environments to work. Is your home really quiet? Do you get a, do you get a nice like quiet place to work from when you're at home or? Where, where do you work from, actually? What's your favorite place to work from? Four, okay, our pause 2D project. Pause 2D is now. Wait, what? Okay. Oh, right, right. It's four. Okay, okay that's still fine. Projection origin, let's see what that is actually. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what we wanted to subtract, was that Z. So we go here, pause 2D becomes 
to be really small for the Z. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Noise canceling headphones. Sweet. So that's two integer. Great, five, eight, 13. I like seeing those simple numbers. Add in the offset 2D. Okay, wait a minute. This, why doesn't offset 2D have a really high Z value? That should have a big Z value. And it doesn't, why not? Um, we need to see this again. Huh, what? that should have been a, a big Z. Okay, let's... <coughs> Seven point. Let's see what this even looks like. Let's just let this run. Okay, let's hit this break on first. Offset 2D, pause, pause. Why is that pause 2D so small? I guess maybe it is 2000. Hmm. All right, whatever. Let's see what this, is this. Maybe this works. Maybe it doesn't. Oh, it's working, sort of. Cool. We have some. It's not erasing any of the voxels, so that's why. All right, cool. It does look like the three-dimensional position is somewhat correct. See how these particles are some. You know, they're they're, they're near the flame. <laughs> Oh, um, we probably need to um, subtract out like half the position. I wonder why some of the particles are down below and some of the particles are above. We'll have to work on that. But I'm happy that at least it's in approximately the right place in the three-dimensional world here. It's, it's rendering all these voxels, these particles. Getting it to have... Um, to be just once, for some reason I'm, I'm really curious why there's two groups of, of particles there. That'll be something to figure out. Well, hey, that's cool. Made a little progress there. Yeah, I mean, once it, <laughs> this is just like, you know, it'll look a lot better once it's actually working as intended. But, um, this, so I'm here at this, at this co-working place and there's an event going on tonight. It, it just started already, so um, I'm gonna go get a beer and hang out for a little bit. But uh, um, so I'm gonna close down the stream, but uh, I, I'm excited to have tested this out, like this co-working spot and seeing if I can live stream here. It looks like I can live stream here, so maybe this would be a spot I'll work, I'll work from from time to time. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so that's it for this stream. Um, Thanks for watching, and um, oh yeah, the 3D effect came so far, huh? Yeah, it's come pretty far since then. It's a really simple engine. It's a hybrid of software and hardware. So it basically just it basically just renders a pixel for every voxel. That's that's it in a nutshell. It basically is just taking every single three-dimensional voxel. Translating it into 2D by projecting the, the model view matrix, boom. You have a two-dimensional position out of a 3D position, and you can kind of... It's, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about this pixel art look, but actually it's totally 3D. So, yeah, so thanks for watching. It was great chatting with y'all. Um, I hadn't seen you in a while, Teeks. Glad, glad we got to chat for a minute, and uh, so I'm going to shut down the stream, and we'll catch y'all next time. Have a good one, guys.